Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillah <coughs> Innal hamdanillahi nahmadu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'khfir Wa na'udhu billahi min syururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina Man yahdihillahu falamudillala Wa man yudlil falahadiyala Ashadu la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayyidina muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd Alhamdulillah All praises be to Almighty God Who has given us all the sustenance which we need Alhamdulillah My dear brothers and sisters in Islam InsyaAllah This week's kuliah zuhur At Mazi Al-Falah Under the top The subject of Hadith InsyaAllah We will continue with our discussion In Kitabul Jami' Fi Babil Adab Today's hadith insyaAllah وعن ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا أكل حدكم طعاما فلا يمسح يده حتى يلعقها أو يلعقها متفق عليه نرتا ابن عباس رضي الله عن الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال when one of you eats He must not wipe his hand until he licks it or give it to someone to lick. Hadith reported by Imam Bukhari and Muslim rahimahullah ta'ala. My brothers and sisters in Islam. This hadith is explaining to us after we finish our meal, we don't straight away go and wash our hand. If there is any food left behind in our hand, we lick it before we wash it. Why was it told or why was it said in that way? Why did Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says this? Okay, let's look at the author's view. The reason for this act is explained by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, You don't know in what portion of your meal is the barakah. Barakah means blessings. This hadith further clarifies that it is not obligatory to wash one's hands after having a meal. It is sufficient if one cleans them by using a towel or napkin. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this hadith is ex- explaining to us, especially the importance, how important is barakah is in our life. Baraka means blessings. We say in English, in Arabic, baraka. In Malay, also we follow the word from Arabic. After we eat our meal with our hand, okay, there are food left over, maybe on our fingers or maybe in between our fingers. It can be a rice, maybe a small piece of chicken or maybe some other thing. So after we eat. We wash it. Maybe Allah's blessings, the barakah, will not be in the food which we have had, but it may have on the food which is left over on our fingers, or our palm, which we don't know. And without realizing it, we wash it, and we are washing away the barakah. So this is why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has taught us lick our fingers after we finish our meal and before we wash it. Sometimes after we licking, we find it totally dry. So that's why the author says it's not necessary for us to wash use, uh, wash our hands by using water. You can use napkin or towels to just wipe it off. But sometimes we understand the food which we take, maybe it can be very oily. So you need to wash even sometimes with a soap. So there's no issue. If we are eating a food by using the spoon, 
For example Then If the spoon There's any left over We just Either lick it Or we put in the mouth To clean it Because of the blessings But if you're eating food Which there's no left over That is not A must Because the moral of this Hadith is Not We have to lick For example I'm using spoon Oh this hadith say I have to lick Um what do you call it? Uh, lick his hand. Uh, so, إِذَا أَكَلَ أَحَدُكُمْ تَعَمَنْ فَلَا يَمْسَ يَدَهُ Because they use the word yet. So, I'm using spoon to this. So, I'm going to lick my hand. No. What is the tool we are using? If we are using our hands, if I'm eating bread, and there is no food left over, bread is a dry thing. So, there's no left over. So, it's not necessary for me to lick my fingers. Because if the food is left over here So we must understand the thing That's why we must understand the hadith Technically and how we're going to apply it uh, Not we read the text like this And we follow it like that We must understand the hadith My dear brothers and sisters in Islam So what we are using We lick it But there where comes another part is that If we don't lick our hand Someone wants to lick it We can give it to them Yes But due to now We understand the COVID-19 So We follow hygiene ways Okay So And what is barakah? Another part which I would like to touch on is Barakah is a blessing So what? If I don't get that blessing So what's so important? As soon as I eat the food I'm full Why? We can see some other hadith Which says that When we eat a food We share with someone when we share Even though we take a two handful of Milk Maybe we take one packet of rice We say nasi lemak Two of your share Maybe you only have two handful only Ustaz my body is big I eat two handful I'm not full But if there is a blessings Allah's blessings is on that meal That food Where both of you are eating InsyaAllah you'll feel because why? The food which we are eating If there's no blessing Your fullness will only be temporarily Maybe after one or two hours You feel hungry again You may be shocked Just why you add one plate of food Or maybe two plates of food But now you are still hungry again Something is wrong So normally you say You don't recite Bismillah is it? Uh, sometimes people do Bismillah but the problem is that there's no blessing on that meal. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, blessing is very, very important. Not only food, any form of sustenance in our life, our money, salary. That's why we don't want only halalan. We want halalan tayyiban. Okay? Not only halal, but we want a good source, a beneficial source. So we want a blessing on that. So that's why when we bring back some of our salary, Finish fast Because there's no blessing over there So it's very very important For us my dear brothers and sisters in Islam We always we want Allah's blessings If Allah's blessings is not in our life We are waste We can live happily, peacefully So the same thing goes Sustainers which we get Even if it is $100 There must be a blessing over there So the same thing goes to food even you are going to eat one curry puff May that curry puff have Allah's blessings So when we eat, Alhamdulillah If someone need, we share with them We we may find it Oh, I don't um, What do you call it? I don't feel full If I'm going to share with someone Why? Because it's not enough But my dear brothers and sisters in Islam If we are going to share the food With someone with ikhlas and the reason for us to share because of Allah I want His blessings, I want His barakah InsyaAllah We will be full And we will be satisfied with the meal Even it's little Even it's a cup of drink Someone's thirsty, we drink a bit and we share with the person We share, we give the person person drink a bit and pass to us, we drink InsyaAllah Okay? But remember, due to this COVID-19 We take care of hygiene So, this is first one, one hadith Another hadith عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم 
ليسلم الصغير على الكبير والمار على القاعد والقليل على الكثير متفق عليه وفي رواية لمسلم والراقب على الماشي Neritan Abu Hurairah radiyallahu an Allah's Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the young should greet with peace the old the one who is passing by should greet the one who is sitting and the small group example in number should salute the larger one agreed a point this hadith been uh, reported by Al Bukhari and Muslim a narration by Muslim has said And the one who is riding Should greet the one who is walking So this hadith is related With our first hadith Whoever had followed The first Kulia Zuhur Which was in February My first Kulia Zuhur Okay, in February The first hadith In Kitabul Jami' Fi Babil Adab is about haqqul muslim ala al muslim situn the right of a muslim or a muslim has six duties towards another muslim the first one is when you meet him greet him then over there i've shared this hadith explanation also who should greet who first uh, sometimes we have this we will be wondering Now I am a person who is age of 25 for example Meeting someone who is age of 40 Or maybe an elderly one Who should give salam first uh, Sometimes different culture have different ways Some people it's okay Whoever give first it's okay uh, So that's why this hadith Rasulullah SAW explain Okay First is A young guy Gives salam Towards to the elderly one Uh, so I'm a 25 years old guy I give my first salam to 40 years old But Ustaz, both of them don't know who is Elder in age Maybe one is 25, one is 27 So who? Okay, there comes, doesn't matter Whoever wants to give the salam first Bismillah Okay, this is a sunnah Okay, it's not a compulsory For example, a young guy who got no knowledge He did not give salam first when he meets Hi, good morning So, we just say Assalamualaikum Hi, how are you? So the person for sure when he hears, he will reply. And remember, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, a person who gives salam, it is sunnah. A person who hears the salam, is compulsory for the person to reply. So it doesn't matter, but if you talk about the adab, when someone younger meets elder, the younger one should give salam to the elder one. But remember, if the younger one has no knowledge or he don't know about this adab, There is no issue for the elder one to give salam first. Second is wal maru ala al qaid. The one who is passing by should greet the one who is sitting. Uh, so another hadith states that a rider must greet a, pedest a pedestrian and a passerby must greet a standing person. If two persons are walking, either of them may commence greeting. However, it is better He is better who greets first The scholars agree that this is only a matter of preference And is not a compulsory ruling So at what I've said earlier Even the author also says the same thing So a person who is standing A person who is walking past The walking past gives salam to the one who is standing And same thing The person who is riding Gives salam to the pedestrian Okay, this is an adab It's just a preference It's not compulsory So someone who's sitting, the sitting can be a younger. The one who's walking can be an elder. So the one who's walking, give salam to the one who's sitting. Or the one who's sitting, no, I'm a younger one. So I should give salam to this elderly person. No issue. Okay? So that is the thing. Second one. So third, وَالْقَلِيلُ عَلَى الْكَثِيرُ Which means, smaller group give salam to the bigger group. For example, the smaller group can be a person or can be two person. Bigger group is bigger in number. For example, I'm alone and a group of students coming towards me. So, I give salam first. Okay. But they respect me as their ustads. They give salam to me first. No issue. It's just a preference. 
So it's not a must, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. So remember, some of them is no daida. You have to give salam first. If you ask me, I'll say that whoever meet someone and starts with a salam, Alhamdulillah, the person have khulukul hasan or husnul khuluk. Okay, a good character. Mashallah. Yeah, and a person have knowledge. Okay. So sometimes, oh, he's not going to give salam first to me. Okay. So I'm not going to say any salam. I'll continue. I will begin with my conversation. Uh, that is not appropriate. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, for this hadith, this is just a guideline. It's not a compulsory. Remember, it's not a compulsory. It's just a guideline or preference. So whoever meets two group, for example, uh, the younger means the elder So the adab Younger gives salam to the elder If the younger don't you know anything The elder can begin with salam No issue The one who says the salam first It is sunnah The one who hears the salam Is compulsory for the person to reply Second the person who is walking Gives salam to the one who is standing The one who is riding Gives salam to the one who is walking Or the one who is standing Or the one who is sitting Third Smaller group of them Gives salam to the bigger group of them it can be an individual, it can be two, or it can be three. This can be a bigger. So it's very, very important, my dear brothers in Islam. So this just a pre preference. It's not a compulsory. Remember this. I'm repeating the same thing. So please don't after hearing this and this. So you emphasize this. We can spread the news. We can always educate. And if a person who's in a group, okay, for example, for example, a uh, one person gives salam to the person who is in the group and in a group one of them reply the salam it is enough so that's why you can see it says that either of them may commence greeting if wants to give salam for example this group one of them gives salam it's okay uh, one of them says salam and one of them in the group everybody hear the group one of them reply wa alaikum salam it's okay but if everybody wants to reply alhamdulillah tafaddal there's no issue about that Okay, my dear brothers in Islam, Alhamdulillah, today I've shared two hadiths. Let me just conclude these two hadiths. First hadith, when a person who finish eating, before washing the hand, lick your hand. If there is a food left behind. So you should know what food you are eating. If you're just eating a burger, so I believe you need to wash your hand. Unless if there's any sauce or what. If not, it's a dry. So no need. If you're eating a food, you are wash uh, if the food is like rice with curry and everything, then you you have to lick if there's any food behind. If you are using spoon, fork, then you see if there's any food left behind, you can just lick it or you can just put it in your mouth and you take take it off. If not, it's dry. Then leave it. For example, you are eating some Western food stick or French fry. That's not necessary for you to go and lick the fork. Okay, the objective is. If there's any food left behind, afraid that the barakah, Allah's blessing is on the food left behind and not the food which you ate. Because of that, so lick your fingers where there is a food left behind. Second hadith is the manner of who should give salam first. So there's three types of group. One, younger one gives salams to the elderly one. Second, the one who's walking gives salams to the one who's standing. The one who's riding gives salam to the one who's standing or the one who's walking or the one who's sitting. The one who's uh, walking gives salam to the one who's sitting also. Third, a smaller group of them gives salam to the larger group. Okay, the smaller group can be one, can be two or can be three. Or the larger group can be more than the smaller group. And if, for example, the, the smaller group, one of them gives salam to a group of them, in the group, one of them replies the salam, okay, alhamdulillah. Not necessary for everybody. One of them be representative. If everybody wants to reply, okay, alhamdulillah. But if, for example, a smaller group meets a larger group and the larger group, smaller group, does not give any salam. So, larger group wants to give the salam first. No problem. This is just a guideline or preference. It's not a compulsory. Wallahu alam bisawab. Inshallah, we will continue with our discussion in Kulia Zuhur next week. Inshallah. Thanks a lot for your time in listening to my small this sharing session may Allah SWT reward us and may Allah SWT may the knowledge which I have shared bring benefit for us Amin Ya Rabbal Alamin 
Wallahu alam bi sawab. I seek uh, forgiveness if there's any shortcom in my sharing session. Wallahu alam bi sawab. Let's end this session by sari tasbih ka frasratu as. Wa nakallahu ma bihamdika shari la ilai ilai anta astaghfir ka atubu ilaik. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa asri inna sana fi khus. La lazina amanu wa amli salihati wa tawasabi al-haqti wa tawasabi al-sabr. Aku laka wali adha wa astaghfirullah lazim ali wa lakum. Wa billahi tawfil hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.